All right, so let's start working on the back piece. And like I said, this isn't gonna be very uh, easy to model. It's kind of hard to see what's going on down here. So we're just gonna have to kind of guess uh, by looking at these couple of images. I think these are the only two I have that you can actually see this piece. And uh, it looks to me like there's a, a piece in the center here of the two legs, and then there's a, a bar across the bottom. And you can see it here, there's another piece across in behind this part. And then it looks like there's another couple of pieces on the outside that kind of wrap over the edge. So yeah, we're gonna kinda have to just wing this. I don't know how accurate it's gonna be, but uh, we'll just do the best we can. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just get these blueprints out of the way. So let's go into the uh, display rollout and just uh, unfreeze all, just so we can grab our prints and we'll hide those, hide selection. And I'm just gonna bring in the uh, last blueprint. So let's go open up our script. And I only have one image, which is the right side. So let's just uh, click on browse and just navigate to the folder where your blueprints are. And we'll open up the leg mount folder and just double click on the image. And then we'll hit create plane. All right, so here it is. And it's pretty simple. I only have the one view, so we're just gonna kind of wing this. Um, let's jump into the right view for a second. And obviously this is gonna be way too big, so we can either scale the print down or we can model it at this size and then scale the piece down. I think what I'll probably do is just scale the print down. So let's just go to scale. We'll do a uniform scale here and just lower this down a bit. I'm not sure how big it'll need to be, so we'll just go like 30 or 31 on the XYZ. And then we'll just pull it over here and kind of guess if this is close to the right size. And that looks about right. I want to leave a little bit of space at the top and bottom here. Um, like I said, it has these uh, these side rails. So I'm going to try to fit those onto the side after. And we'll see if we can get it to fit into the, uh, the slots we created back here on this piece. So it's definitely going to be a little tricky, but uh, we'll try uh, at this size. So let's just move this over so we can see. And I'm just going to do this out of a plane. So let's go to the crate panel and grab one. Drag one out here. We'll just trash our segments and let's go into x-ray mode, alt x. Just gonna right click and convert it to edible poly. And we'll just go to vertex here and start shaping this. So I'm gonna grab these two up here and just match them up with the top two corners. And grab the center ones down here and just pull them down. And match it up. And we are gonna have to tweak this uh, probably quite a bit, so don't worry about getting it right on. All right, so let's grab the back edge here, shift drag it over on the x to clone it. And we'll move it up. Let's uh, rotate it a little bit as well. All right, just going to tweak the verts a little bit. Okay, back to edge. We'll just shift drag it down one more time. And just put the vert in place right on the corner here. And as you can see on the, uh, the images here, there's a fairly... Uh, complex curve here it kind of goes down and then up and then back down into the foot so we're going to need to add a couple extra edges here to kind of control this curve so I'm not going to add all the ones here but uh, I think I'm going to add this one so let's uh, maybe do that first with quick slice I'm just going to chop this one in right there this guy and let's also add one down here uh, we have a, a bar that goes across the bottom between the two feet and uh, I'm just going to put an edge in here so we have some faces to work with uh, in a minute so let's just cut one in there right in the uh, center of these three edges and up here on this uh, image here you can kind of see that there's uh, this boxy piece um, so I'm just going to cut an edge for that as well so let's maybe do this one right here right click it in and we'll add a support edge at the top like that and we'll add a couple support edges along the sides as well so let's go back to edge and I'm just going to grab one and do a ring on it do a connect, uh, we'll do two, and we'll just take up the pinch amount. Let's go maybe 85 or so, that should work. And I think that should uh, get us started, so let's uh, turn off edge. Just gonna jump out into the uh, back view for a sec. Let's right click and unhide all, so we can see our blueprint, and we'll just pull this piece over to where it needs to be. And this is actually it right here, um, both sides and then the center. And as you can see, it's not really gonna match up uh, totally good, so let's just move it over here. Just gonna judge how thick I need this to be. Um, so let's put a shell on it. And we'll just crank up the amount. Maybe like 20. Just so it's touching the side of our piece up here. And then let's actually move it over into position. So let's trash our, uh, our blueprint here. We don't need it anymore. All right, we'll get rid of that and just move our piece over. All right, so pull it in.
and you can kind of see where the slot is at the top and bottom there. So I'm just going to leave some space above and below this um, so we can create that next piece that'll kind of hug the side of it and hopefully fit in here properly. All right, so that's close enough. And I think I'll leave it right there for now. Um, we're going to have to start creating this center section that uh, bridges these two legs together. So let's uh, maybe grab some faces here. All right, I'm going to convert a head to a poly again. Uh, just go to polygon. Let's grab this one and this one, I guess. And let's take this bottom one as well. And we'll just extrude these three. All right, just crank this up a bit and then uh, hit OK. Jump into the back view. And we'll just move this over so it's kind of centered on our line on the print there. Looks good, so let's turn off face. Just gonna take a look. All right, so let's put a symmetry on this. Now we're gonna do this on the Z axis. And let's uh, drop down in the uh, symmetry roll and just select the mirror and then just move this over. All right, if you want to, you can actually right click on the move tool and just zero the X out, which will snap to the uh, origin. Might need to go a little farther over, but we'll take a look here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to move it over a slight bit more. Just wanted to fit in between those two pieces on the sides. All right, so let's uh, turn off the symmetry, jump back out. Uh, I think that should work, so let's uh, right click and convert it to poly now. I'm just going to go to edge and take out the center edges. We don't need these guys, so we'll loop those. Control backspace them. And I think I'm going to steal some polygons off here for our next piece. So let's just go to polygon. Turn on ignore back facing, turn on by angle, and just select one of the sides. Alright, let's turn off by angle and just deselect this stuff. Alright, we just want the uh, entire side selected. We'll just copy these off, so just hold uh, shift, drag on the X, and it's going to detach this from the uh, original mesh and clone it. Let's just do it to object. Doesn't matter about the name, just hit OK. And that'll save us some time in a second, so I'm just going to hide these, get them out of the way. Let's actually put a material on here that we can see. And we'll just refine this a little bit. So we're going to need to support it because I am going to turbo smooth it. So let's go to edge. Um, let's maybe put some support edges down the side here. I'm going to do both sides at the same time. So bring around, connect. We'll do two. Pinch them apart. Let's do maybe yeah, 70 might work. So we'll say OK to that. Uh, we're going to need some in the center as well. So let's just drag right through here and here. Make sure you don't have back facing turned on. And just do a ring to be sure you got all of them. And we'll do another connect with two segments and just pinch them apart a little bit more. All right, 95 should do it. That'll support the inside corner here. Let's go into isolation mode, uh, Alt Q, so we can see what we're doing a bit better. We're gonna need some across here to hold our uh, top and bottom edges, so let's ring around that, connect. And that should work, so we'll say okay. Let's actually get rid of this one here. We don't really need that. Gonna control backspace that one out, and we might need to slide this one up, but I'm gonna leave it for now. We're gonna need some support here as well, so let's just do one side at a time. So ring that, connect. This time we'll do one, no pinch, and I'm just gonna slide this up closer to the top here. Try to get in here so you can see, and we'll go about negative 90 on that, and we'll do the same on the other side. Ring, connect, and this time we'll do positive 90. Right, and we don't want to add any down here because it's going to screw up our curve, so I'm just going to leave that and we'll go down here to the back and we're going to need one on the inside. So let's ring, connect, All right, we'll lower this down. Alright, we'll just do like negative 95 or so, I'm going to fix that manually in a second and we'll add one to the other side as well. And you could do this um, on one side before you put the symmetry on, so you wouldn't have to do it, but uh, I forgot about it. so. Just gotta do it quick. All right, so let's go around these edges here. We'll do two. No slide, and we'll just pinch them apart. Maybe 75, 76, something like that should be fine. And then we'll need some around the inside of our hole. So let's just grab an edge in there, do a ring, connect it, and just uh, raise this up. We just need something over here to hold this. All right, so let's go uh, maybe 90. And I'm gonna do that here again on the outside.
and that should take care of it uh, pretty much. We might need to add a few on these little pieces here though because I think they're going to collapse when we turbo smooth it. So let's just grab a corner edge here and here. Ring those and we'll do the same on this side. Grab one of the ones at the top and the bottom. Ring them. Connect. Alright, we'll just do two again. No uh, slide but we'll lower the pinch down. Let's go down a little bit. Like 20 or so and say okay. Okay, so I think we're in good shape. Let's put our turbo smooth on and see how it looks. We might be a little rough in here on the curve. I don't know if we're going to have enough geometry to actually get it perfectly smooth, but uh, we'll see how it looks. That's not horrible. A little rough here. Um, we could take it up to three iterations, uh, which would probably smooth it out pretty nice. I usually don't like to use three iterations of uh, turbo smooth that I don't have to because it's uh, usually not really necessary, but in this case I think I'm going to have to because it's just not going to be smooth enough. All right, so let's turn on ice line display, and I'm just gonna lower it to two. Uh, for now, I think when we map it, we might want to uh, collapse some of it down and then add another one after. So we'll leave it like that. Uh, let's just exit isolation one, just see how this uh, fits with the rest of it. All right, that's pretty good for that piece. I think I'm just gonna leave it. So let's put our gray shader on, and uh, we'll start working on the next piece. I'm just gonna do a save quickly. All right, so let's unhide uh, all for a sec and just get our little strip of polys back. We're right, just going to pull that over here for a second. Let's grab our piece and just uh, go into isolation mode, Alt-Q. I'm just going to drop back into edit poly for a sec. I think I forgot to uh, straighten these edges out here, so I'm just going to do that really quickly in the right view. All right, let's zoom in here. Uh, they're still pretty bent, so let's just uh, go to vertex and just grab these lower ones here. Uh, you could probably leave it if you want to, it's not really going to probably make much difference, but uh, we'll just put our edge constraints on here and just pull them up just a little bit. I just want to kind of even everything out. Alright, let's take a look here quickly. Alright, that's good enough I think. If you want to tweak it or uh, you know optimize it, you uh, definitely could do that. But uh, for the sake of speed, I'm just going to move on to this uh, next piece. So let's grab our strip. I'm just going to pull it over here, and this one needs to be extended uh, to actually encompass the uh, the bolts and stuff for the foot. So let's jump back out here for a sec. So I'm going to make this a little longer. Here's the bottom down here. Um, it's going to screw the curve up a little bit when we do it, but uh, we'll fix that after. So let's just uh, start by going to uh, polygon. I'm just going to maybe. All right, let's just take this edge loop over here first. So let's just loop that, control box, space it out, and then we'll just grab these verts here and just pull them down. And grab these ones, just pull them over. And I'm just gonna pull it right past um, the end of the blueprint there, and I'm just gonna chop this off to keep it straight. So let's go to quick slice, and we'll just cut an edge right across there. And then we'll just get rid of these uh, screwed up ones. They're all bent, so we'll get those out of there. I'm just going to make sure I have this kind of in the right position. Uh, we'll leave it there for a second. So let's uh, go back into the back view. And I'm just going to put a shell on this as well. And we'll just crank it up. Let's uh, move it over a little bit first. I'm just going to zoom in here. All right, just lower this down a bit. Let's check it out in perspective. And like I said, I want to see if I can get this to actually fit into the, uh, the end of our piece here. So. It's definitely going to take some adjusting. Uh, looks like that's pretty close to fitting, so let's just do maybe 13 on the outer amount for the shell. I'm just going to move it over slightly as well. And we'll convert it to poly. Alright, so check the blue on. Take a look here. And like I said, it kind of hugs around the edge there, so we're going to need some. Uh, some more thickness here to work with. So for that, let's just maybe uh, go to edge. I'm just gonna do a ring around here. And then control click polygon. All right, so you got the whole outside uh, selected. And then I'm gonna deselect these three on the bottom. All right, holding alt, just get rid of those. And we'll do the same thing up at the top here. All right, just uh, alt click these three. Okay. And then we're just going to extrude it a little bit. So I'm just going to move in where I can kind of see the height we need. And we'll just do an extrude here. Uh, we want to be on local normal for this. And we'll just lower it down a bit. 
document. Let's check out the bottom. It looks pretty good. So maybe five or five point two. That'll depend on how big you uh, you made this piece when you scale it down. So just adjust until it looks like it kind of fits. And we'll jump back uh, out here. Just take a look. Make sure everything kind of extrude the right direction. You can see the bottom's kind of screwed up. So I'm going to fix that in a second. Um, a little bit bent up here as well. So let's just uh, jump back out into the right view. And for the bottom down here, I think I might just do this the same way. So let's just uh, draw a face. I'm just going to hack off the bottom quickly. All right, and then just grab the faces there. Make sure you don't have back face and turn on. I'm just going to delete them. Uh, you can manually straighten this stuff out if you don't want to actually have to cut it off. Uh, sometimes I find it just faster, so I'm just going to move it back down. And we're going to have a hole at the bottom, obviously. So let's uh, go back into perspective and just uh, fix this quickly. So we'll go to border grab our border, cap it, and then we're just going to cut some new edges in here to connect our support edges up. Alright, so let's go to vertex. I'm just going to grab these two verts right here across from each other on that outer support edge and just uh, connect it. Do the same thing here. Grab this one and this one, connect it. This guy and this guy. And that one and that one. All right, so that takes care of that. We're gonna need some this way as well, so let's just grab an edge here and do a ring around it. Should go all the way around, and we'll just do another couple of support edges here. So do a connect two segments, pinch them apart. All right, let's take a look here. All right, edges are fairly hard, so we'll just do maybe 65 or so on the pinch, no slide, that should be good. And then we're gonna to need to pull this out, so let's uh, go back to edge. So let's go back into the right view first. Just want to make sure we straighten out the top corner up here. All right, so for this, I'm not going to bother cutting it off. I'm just going to kind of move this manually, kind of straighten everything out. That doesn't look too bad. I think I might tighten up the support edge a little bit, so I'm just going to remove it. So I'll just grab that one there, do a loop, control backspace it out, and then I'm just going to cut a new one in with a quick slice. All right, maybe right there. I just want that edge to be fairly tight at the top. All right, I'll zoom in here so you can see. So just put that new one in right there. So now let's pull some faces out. So let's just grab an edge here and do a ring on it. I'm gonna go around to the bottom and grab one, holding control, do a ring on that. All right, so just around the two thin parts here, and then we'll control click polygon to get a poly selection. And we're just going to have to deselect some of it in the uh, the back view. So let's jump in here. And I'm just going to hold down Alt and just drag a selection box around it. Okay, like that. Just deselect all that stuff. Just want to make sure you only have the faces um, facing the inside. So nothing on the bottom or either end. That looks pretty good. So it should be 12. And I'm just going to extrude this to get the piece that kind of overlaps this piece. Alright, so extrude again. Uh, let's figure out how much you want this to be sticking out. Alright, apologies, I know I'm jumping all over the place here. Just a little awkward to see, so I'm just going to take that up a bit. Let's do maybe... Uh, we'll just do like 7. I think that's enough. Let's say OK. Take a look, make sure everything worked. Alright, and we're going to have to adjust our curve probably to make sure that it's going to fit actually on here, but uh, let's maybe add some support to these uh, these pieces first. So we'll just grab an edge on each one, do a ring, connect them up. Uh, we'll do two again, and 65 should work, so we'll say OK. And we're going to need to add one across here to hold the uh, bottom corner, so let's just do that with quick slice in the right view. Alright, turn off edge, quick slice it, and we'll just cut one right across there, and turn that off. Okay, so I think we got pretty much everything we're going to need to to actually maintain the shape. Um, let's put a turbo smooth on and just see how it's looking. We're going to need to do some work in here. Okay, so it's off quite a bit as you can see. So I'm going to jump out into the, uh, the right view for a sec. And I'm actually going to change my view from right to left. So I'm just going to right click up here and just go views left. Just so we're looking at the inside of it. And we're going to have to kind of figure out how we're going to get this to fit uh, on here. Up here looks pretty good. It looks like it's fitting. Um, down here is kind of a mess. Alright, so let's uh, maybe drop into uh, into poly for a sec. 
just gonna turn my edges back on. I think I might add another edge loop in here, so let's just do another quick slice. And I'm just gonna hack one right across, like that. It's gonna stiffen it up a little bit. Um, let's maybe go to vertex. And I have show and result turned on here so I can see the smoothing. And I'm just gonna grab some verts up here at the top and just kind of see if I can adjust this. And we probably won't be able to get it to uh, fit perfectly, but uh, we'll see if we can get it fairly close. Let's maybe uh, put a third uh, iteration of Turbo Smooth on here just so it kind of matches what we have down here. All right, I'm just gonna grab that and put three on there as well, just for the time being. And we'll drop back into the poly and just uh, move these around just a little bit. All right, and we have a taper on the end of this piece, so I'm just gonna maybe grab all these guys and just move them over just slightly. I don't wanna change the shape too much. All right, I'm just gonna look up here. All right, like that. I'm gonna leave this because I don't really want this to be totally bent in to fit up against here, so I think I might tweak this piece in a second. Um, let's just maybe move these ones down a bit like that and let's grab these guys here move them back just a bit just kind of clean up this corner here maybe like that and then I think I'm just gonna move this slightly again I want to keep that kind of straight if possible let's uh, switch this back to right for a second and we'll just take a look with the print we just don't want to be off too much but that looks uh, fairly good all right, so let's exit uh, Vertex, just turn off our edges for a sec, just take a look. All right, I'm just gonna hide some of this stuff. Let's go to isolation mode so we can see better. All right, so it's fitting decently up here, which is good. This doesn't look too bad. Um, and this looks pretty good underneath. Okay, so you can either leave it like this if you want, or you can maybe tweak the end of this piece, which I might just do quickly. So I'm just gonna go into uh, Edit Poly again. And just go to Vertex. I'm gonna go down in the, uh, the rollout here and just open up the Soft Selection uh, panel. And I'm just gonna turn on Use Soft Selection. All right, we can turn on Show and Result here as well. And you'll notice you get these uh, different color gradients. Um, if you're not familiar with Soft Selection, um, what it does is it just lets you move uh, vertices around and it kind of has a fall off curve that you can adjust here with the settings and that's going to adjust the taper um, and how affected the mesh will be. Um, so if it's in the uh, orange range, it's going to be heavily affected and as it tapers out to blue, it's going to be less affected by whatever you do to the verts. All right, if that makes any sense at all. All right, so I'm just going to go back into the uh, left view. All right, let's turn our edges on so we can see what we're doing. And if you were to turn off uh, isoline display, up here in Edit Poly, you get uh, much more of a visual representation of what it's doing. So let's take this down to two iterations, it's a little heavy. And we're just going to grab these verts down here on the bottom. And all these guys. And I'm just going to pull these. Let's turn off our edge constraints first. I'm just going to pull these back towards the inside just a little bit. And I might just rotate it ever so slightly. All right, and you can see kind of the fall off there. The effect uh, kind of tapering off as it gets up into the blue. And this is a really useful tool. Um, I recommend playing around with it a little bit if you've never tried it because it's pretty uh, useful in some cases. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of line everything up like that just so it fits a little better, it doesn't look so weird. And we'll just check it out in perspective. I don't wanna spend too much time doing it. Um, you can fiddle around if you want to more, but uh, that's fitting pretty good. So I think I'll just call that done and we'll move on. Let's just uh, throw a gray shader on this piece. I'm going to turn on my ice line display over here for this one. And we'll just leave this at 2 and we'll leave this at 2 for now. And again, uh, later on we might add another iteration on here. Okay, so let's just uh, copy this over to the other side. Let's uh, X isolation mode as well. I'm just going to jump over here for a sec. Let's see what's going on. I think I uh, got rid of my blueprint by accident, which I did. And this is why it's always a good idea to actually freeze your blueprints, but I forgot to do it when we unhit it. So I'm just going to fix this quickly in the uh, material editor. Just gonna grab a new swatch and just open up the uh, map box for diffuse. Choose bitmap. Navigate back to my blueprints uh, folder. Just open up the main one, and we need the uh, back image here. 
Just open that up and we'll drag and drop it on the plane. Show in viewport. There we go. All right, so let's make sure we uh, hide these. All right, so we'll just grab everything and we'll just go in here and free select it. Again, just so we can't accidentally uh, apply material to it or hide anything. All right, so now let's jump into the back view. Let's grab our piece here. I think I'll just shift drag it over. Actually, let's mirror it. So let's go into the uh, hierarchy tab, just hit effect pivot only. I'm just going to snap this to the center by right clicking on the move tool and zeroing out the X spinner. And we'll turn that off and then we'll just go up here to mirror. Click on that. Uh, we'll do it on the X and we'll do a copy and say OK. All right, and you can use symmetry if you want or you can just manually do it. All right, so that's not looking too bad. Um, again, it's not perfect. If you want to take a little more time, you could probably, uh, you know, fix the curve a little bit better. But uh, it's not looking too bad. All right, so let's just organize our views here. We're going to turn this back to right so we can see our blueprint. And I think we're fitting pretty good here. So we'll do a save, and then we'll start working on the foot, and then we'll finally be done with the base. And like I mentioned earlier, the uh, the legs are definitely the trickiest part of doing this. So once we're done with this stuff, we'll uh, probably be able to move quite a bit faster up here on this stuff, it's a lot simpler. All right, so let's save.